Hi, today uh, we're going to do a bit of retro computing. I'm going to get out my uh, Commodore 64, and uh, this is an early Commodore 64 uh, purchased in 1983. It's serial number P0013851. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, try out replacing the old power supply. As you know, uh, everyone says replace your power supply in your 64 because the 5 volts can get high uh, in an old power supply and ruin the computer. So what I did is I bought, uh, after watching a, a review online, I bought this uh, C64 power supply from Keylog and we're going to take a look at how that works on, on the 64. So here we are at my bench and I've got um, the 64 out. I've got the original power supply from 1983 that came with it. Still works. Um, I'm just a, a little tentative about using it. And I've got this new uh, power supply from Keylog. I happen to buy the model that has two connectors, one for the 64 and one for the 15412, just in case I wanted to use the same supply to power both the 64 and a, and a disk drive. So, um, what I've got here is uh, I've already removed, removed the keyboard and you can see uh, it's one of the early models. You can tell it's an early model. It still has the, it has the ceramic uh, VIC chip. Uh, it has no heat sinks on the, um, on the voltage regulators. And, and you can see it's a uh, assembly uh, 324298 revision A. So first things first, let's show that um, it's in good working order. So what I'm going to do, and show that my old power supply is in good working order, is what a lot of people aren't willing to do, hook up the old power supply. I've checked it out. Looks like it's in spec. And I have a 1702 monitor right here. Power this guy up. All right, everything's happy. We're doing just fine. So now let's go back to the machine. So let's unplug the old power supply and we'll switch to the new power supply here, which is uh, plugged in and the light on it shows that it's already on. Like that. So now we're ready to turn the machine back on and let's take a look at how that's working. So let's note the time here on my clock. It's uh, 1232 and I just turned the machine on and you can see things are looking pretty good. Uh, and let's just uh, see what happens. Things are still looking good. We're two minutes in and the screen looks okay. So let's keep going. All right, so now look what's happening here. It's glitching on the screen. See, it's getting wavy lines there and stuff. That is not good. So we're just a few minutes since we turned this thing on and uh, it's starting to glitch out, rippling up and down the side of the screen. Let's just uh, see what's happening here. All right, now it's getting a little worse. Losing, losing sync, and now I can see, I can still see the banner and the ready prompt back there. It's glitching pretty bad. And I can see some of the characters are, they're, they're, it's no longer says ready. There's some other characters in there, so something's definitely wrong. All right, so we powered it off again. So as usual, you wanna see if, can we reproduce that problem? So all we're doing is Starting up again, see if we can reproduce that problem. And like I said, I poked around here before and I can see that some of the components are getting pretty hot with this power supply. Uh, the VIX running a little over 100 right now and uh, seeing already, let's see, temperatures over 100 on that one voltage regulator. 
All right, so we're seeing the screen glitching again. And all I'm going to do is pull some compressed air on that voltage regulator. So compressed air on the voltage regulator. Uh, no glitching. All right, so let's watch the screen again. See if we can reproduce the problem. In the meantime, let's get out our meter and let's look at uh, let's look at the voltage coming out of that voltage regulator. All right, so let me see another 5.14 volts. Okay, we're seeing 5.11 now, and we're getting that screen glitching, right? And the, the, the voltage is dropping out of that voltage regulator. So let's hit it with air again. And as soon as I do that, the, the glitching stops. So that's the phenomenon uh, that I'm seeing with, uh, you know, with, this, with this power supply. Uh, got my machine on just a couple of minutes and uh the video starts glitching and you know by poking around we can see that the voltage coming out of that voltage regulator is dropping and you, you can imagine you know the, the the machine needs that a little bit over five volts to work correctly so as soon as it starts dropping too much then things start glitching out uh looks like it's somehow hitting the video or the vic there so what else can we check so what's going on here with this power supply versus the, the the original well it just it just provides two you know two different voltages right right here in the documentation from keylog the commodore 64 port on these top two pins up here provides nine volt uh, ac there's a ground pin down there and it provides plus five volt on that one down there now i can measure those and uh one that's easy to measure now because we can get at the top two pins is the ac so let's take a look at that. So we'll, we'll take our meter, switch it over to 200 volts AC. So these two, top two guys are those two pins, the, the AC. And it's saying it's at 11.2 volts AC. That's pretty high. It's certainly higher than the other. I'm getting a glitching back. I'm gonna hit this with some more cold air. And it looks okay again. So let's power it down and switch back to the original power supply. So put that one in there. And let's power this guy up again. Things look good. So now let's measure, you know, this is with the, the load, the machine on the power, on the old power supply. Uh, what do we get there? 9.2 9.3 so so you know what i'm seeing is this new uh this new power supply is hot on the ac side and uh, a couple of volts hotter than my original commodore power supply so now um we're back from the bench so uh so that particular power supply you know uh from keylog seems not to work particularly well with my particular 64. Now um, on the retro channel on YouTube, uh, they they reviewed that particular power supply and took it apart and interestingly found that um, measuring the voltages inside, also seeing a uh, high voltage on the AC. So it seems not that it's something wrong with that specific power supply that I have, but it's, it's a, a characteristic of the current keylog power supply. Uh, and, and it's possibly just not tested with an older 64. So, um, so what's different about, about this 64 that I have? Well, one of the things that is different is, so now I'm over here, here's where the power connector is on it. This particular voltage regulator right here next to the can around the video is the one that takes the AC and emits a, a five volt uh, DC. I'm sorry, it takes the, the, well, it takes the AC goes through a rectifier first, turns into uh, an equivalent DC voltage, and then this produces five volts. Uh, in, on this board, both that regulator and the other regulator, the one for the uh, 12 volts down here, 
that uh, neither of those has a heat sink on the early 64s. You can see it's just hanging out there. Uh, it's usually bent over a little more, like when it, when it came from the factory, it was like that. And this other one is laying down, no heat sink. And there's not much room for me to put a heat sink in there because of where they're located. This one's right underneath the bottom of the keyboard. This one might have a tiny bit of room, but it's got that can right next to it. Uh, and it's just, they changed the layout of the board, uh, probably uh, because people were having problems with those particular voltage regulators getting hot. So anyway, that's what I found so far. I don't have a solution for it yet, but uh, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments uh, if you have any ideas about how I can uh, solve the problem. Uh, 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 let me know.